to get my link up so I can see all of your comments. So let's go on here. go so got me on here now make sure I'm right at the end of the live thing so I can see everybody let me switch my light on and I can say hello all right okay who have we got then we've got Brittany oh we've got a phone that keeps falling down we have got we've got Cheryl Hello all, today is a perfect weather day here in New England, however I'm looking forward to see if Clara working on the background. Yes, I am going to do that today, that's going to be today's um, focus I think. Hi Paula from Canada, and we've got Yvonne, hi Yvonne. So Yvonne's cross stitching and listening to me at the same time, so very good multitasking there Yvonne. Hi Jeanette, and hi Mandy. We've got Emma, Hannah. We've got lovely Emily who's lurking, <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, Heather, Victoria, Kathleen and Tina so far. So hello everybody. I hope you've all had a good week. Let me know if you've been doing anything fun. You know I like to hear everyone's uh, stories and what they've been up to. Me, myself, it's just been a, a normal week, <laughs> Groundhog week. Uh, apart from, what day was it that I made that? pencil holder i don't know whether any of you saw that i put a um video up of me in the shed making a pencil holder out of timber <laughs> and it was basically just half an hour of me sat there looking completely confused at how to do maths and ever since that video everybody well not everybody but a few people have commented saying i should have drawn a template first which is like the most basic you know idea that I should have thought about but I always seem to look for the harder way around to do things and I just completely miss the easy way so I'm glad that uh, you all enjoyed it the pencil block is good thank you I've actually had a few people ask if I will paint it so I thought that may, might make a cool um here it is I thought that might make a cool video if I paint it I don't know what I'm going to paint um on it whether I'll just do it like a rainbow ombre with some sponge maybe that'll look quite cool but look how wonky all the pencils are because I didn't screw the not screw I didn't drill the holes properly so the, the kind of the holes are wonky <laughs> but you know it serves a purpose it's kind of annoying that I have to like reach in to get the little tiny ones in the middle but it looks pretty cool anyway doesn't it, it looks like um, a very colorful hedgehog Hi Josephine, welcome. Hi Michelle and hello Laura. So yes, what's everyone been up to? I'm just going to have to try and make this book a little bit straighter here because if we're doing the background I need to be able to get right to the spine. Wonky is good, yes, wonky is good. It's better than perfect and, and straight and isn't it really. Morning Christina. I'm lurking as well as I'm working. Oh, I won't tell. <laughs> working and getting ready for your holiday. Where are you going, Hannah? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things I can't do, a lot. <laughs> But yeah, other than that this week, I have... Well, I've been working on this page. I'll give you a sneak peek. Oh, you're going to Iceland. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted to go to like the Nordic countries. I, I, that just interests me so much. I, I, I'm not bothered about the usual places that people want to go. I, you know, just love the Nordic countries. So anyway, this is the book that I was working on this week. And it's... I don't even know if it's been released yet. It's Castle Art's new book and I'm going to be reviewing it. And uh, it's all about butterflies, as you can see. I'm not going to do a whole review because I'll do that at a later date. But you can just see that it's got all these different butterfly pictures in colour at the front. And then, you know, there's a couple of... A couple. There's a, <laughs> there's a book full of line art. 
and then here's the one that I've just finished. So I coloured the butterflies themselves with Prismacolor and you know the, the main flowers and stuff but then the background I used the Castle Arts pastel tints that came with the book and a lot of blending solution so I just kind of scribbled little bits of pastel colour everywhere and then put loads of blending solution on it because I was trying to make it look like a bit of an ombre, not ombre, but blurred, blurred background. Because if you look on the um, the original picture, the background is blurred and all the fore foreground stuff is in focus. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Um, what else? Oh, I've got the, hang on. I've got the 100 Chroma Flow tin. So the 150 pre-orders have actually been sold out at Cult Pens, where I normally get my pencils from. So I got the 100, so we can have a look at all the new colours up to the 100 mark. And hopefully I'll be getting the extra 50 when they're released at some point. But yeah, so that's another video I've got to do, showing all the different colours. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, love the Nordic countries too, absolutely love to go. Yeah, I am exactly the same. Like. I really want to go to Denmark. They say it's the most happiest place on earth and it just lo looks amazing. Hi Steph, hello. Right, so I said this week that we would work on the background. That's what we're going to do. And in fact, I'm going to put this Butterflies book underneath here because it's, it's going to help. With this being one of the last pages in the book, it's going to help us to um, have something to lean on, if that makes sense. Uh, newest one from Derwent. Yeah, they're releasing Chromaflow pencils, which were originally 72 pencils. Now they've bumped them up to sets of 100 and 150. So very, very exciting. I love Chromaflow pencils. Hi, Melinda. Right, so what I need to ask you guys is about the background. I've decided that I'm going to make it the same as this one so that it really does look like a double page spread, a scene, you know. Um, and I think I can probably just about identify the prisma colours that I've used on this. But because we are using Holbein's exclusively on this page, I wanted to ask you whether you would like me to continue across with this prisma colour scheme or try and find alternatives in Holbein that are like as close as I can get to this. Because I know that everybody voted for me to use Holbein pencils on this page. So I'm more than happy to do that if I can find a good um, a good match across them. Oh my gosh, a cruise to the Northern Lights. I would love that. Brittany's going grocery shopping with her mum and dad. Hi, Amy. So yeah, so let me know what you think I should do. Should I use the Holbein or should I continue with the Prisma? Laura says continue with the Prisma, it will look more consistent. If it's easier for you to match, just use the Prismas. Yeah, I was thinking I might just use the Prismas because at least then it's going to be pretty much dead on. Yeah, Victoria says Prismas as well. So I think, just looking at the shades, I think this is Mediterranean blue. And this looks a bit like light cerulean blue. So hopefully that's what the colours are. So I'll get my little pencil hedgehog and I'll find the pencils that I need and we'll give it a go then. Everybody's saying Prismas. Brilliant, that makes my life a lot easier. <laughs> right, I'll get my hedgehog. So Mediterranean blue. I'm trying to figure out where it would be in this uh, configuration. What's that one? No, Blue Violet Lake. It must be down here somewhere. Um, what's that one? Blue Lake. I don't even know how big it is. What's that one again? Did I see that one? Oh, Periwinkle. Where are you, Mediterranean Blue? see peacock blue mm, blue violet lake this is <laughs> it's not very conducive to finding your colors quick i tell you it's really in copenhagen i'll tell you what let me get my color family chart out and then i'll know whereabouts it might be so mediterranean blue it, oh, this is holbein 
Right. Mediterranean blue is here. It's next to peacock blue now. I saw that one. Oh, it's a little baby one. That's why I can't see it. And I can't even get it. This is this is what I mean. You see, it's not ideal. Right. Yes, Mediterranean blue. And then I think, like I said, the other one is light cerulean blue, which is <laughs> somewhere. Cerulean. Where's light cerulean? There it is, light cerulean, right. <laughs> okay, so I'll just get these two out for now because I don't want to go too far with it. Um, yeah, so everyone said prismas, that's great. Laura says, you need to make the chart with the numbers on the hedgehog like I did on mine. Yeah, I do, I do. I uh, just need to paint it first, I think. I don't know, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Right, I'm going to sharpen these. So hopefully I have got the right colours here. I'm pretty sure that's Mediterranean blue. Let's zoom you in. Move you across. Uh, where are we? So hopefully that's zoomed in proper. I'll just wait for my camera to catch up so I can see. Probably a little bit more. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just waiting for my video to catch up that I'm watching so I can see that you can see properly. Hello, uh, Emily. I you, hope you're all right. Right, so we've got Mediterranean Blue, which is Prismacolor 1022. And let's just give it a quick patch test. Yeah, that's the same colour, I'm pretty sure. So it's just a bit more difficult to get into this bit because it, there's a bend there's a, a crease on this page and I'm trying to make it smooth so it's a bit more difficult when you've got a, a crease so just using this Mediterranean blue I'm going to do an all over swatch of colour and then we'll start to fade it into the next colour Okay, so I've done a bit, but it's not enough yet. I'm going to get down to about this point before I start blending. Like I say, that crease is making life a bit difficult. The tree reminds me of the one from Silverstein's The Giving Tree. Is that the one? Um, I have heard that story before, I'm sure I have. Because I think is is a quote from that she loved the the tree loved him very much more than her own life. Is that a quote from that um, story, or am I thinking of a different story? Hi, Blue. So I'm just using heavy pressure because I want a solid bit of colour. I am going to move this book out of the way for a minute because I think it might be impeding me. And I'm going to just go across ways because it seems like I've gone across ways on the other one, but it's so long since I've done it, I can't remember. That's the one. Oh, I have that quote. I have that quoted on my arm. Let me see if I can get it on screen. So I did... I changed it to be little boys because I've got two boys and I had this done years and years ago and it's the same quote I just adjusted it 
So yeah, that's written on my arm forever. Hopefully you can see that, I'm just checking. Yeah, you can. <laughs> it just takes a, f a good 30 seconds for my stream to like catch up on my phone so I, I can see what I'm actually doing and see if you can see it as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I thought that was where I got it from. But I don't know as if I've ever actually read the book. I think I just saw the quote one day and I thought that would make a good tattoo. So as I'm getting down to about this level, I'm going to start loosening my hold on the pencil and just lessening the pressure a bit more so that we've got a nice area for the next colour to blend into. So we're missing Barbara this evening. Barbara has unfortunately lost her horse, beautiful horse that she, she put pictures on Instagram. I don't know whether any of you saw it, but absolutely gorgeous horse. And uh, that's really obviously been very emotional for her. So I think she's busy tonight, but she's here with us in spirit and just wanted to shout out to Barbara in case she's watching later that we're all thinking of you. Okay, so we've got a bit of a lighter, we've got a bit of a lighter area there and that means we can come in with the next colour. Just want to make this as solid as I can. And then next colour is light cerulean blue, which is PC904. So we'll go to the very point where the sort of heavier Mediterranean blue stopped and we'll colour straight over that and hopefully it will give us a nice blend. Yes, much loves to Barbara. Love tats, hate pain, think it will be right up there with the root canal which I have on Thursday pain wise. Really? Oh my gosh, I would rather have a tattoo than a root canal any day of the week. I had a root canal when I was 12. That shows you, you know, the state of my teeth. And uh, it wasn't pleasant, but it wasn't horrific either. And, um, but yeah, I don't mind the pain of tattoos. I can bear with it. So just looking at these two colours together, I'm pretty sure that is the same colour. I just, I don't know whether there's any non-photo blue there. I'll just grab my chart again. No, I, th mm, I don't know actually. It's really hard to see because this chart is big and I'm trying to get it close to it. No, I think it definitely is this light cerulean. So I'll just carry on with this down to where the next blend begins. There's going to be, you know, a mark here of, of a darker mark because of the crease. There's not anything I can do about that, really. I mean, I've tried to sort of invert the crease a bit, but it's not really doing much. So it just is what it is. Uh, my dentist is good, does nerve blocks, drugs and nitrous. <laughs> yeah, that's what I need. Definitely every time I go. Hi, Eileen. Mandy's having her first tattoo next month at the age of 58. Well, you're never too old for a tattoo. I managed to get my mum to have one a few years ago and she's not someone that would really be interested in anything like that. And she was dead scared, but she did it. Only a little thing. What are you getting tattooed, Mandy? Do you know yet? I 
I think the the tattoo that took the longest was the Hannibal Lecter tattoo that I've got. I'm sure that was about five hours. But the most painful one was the hand, definitely. And the worst recovery. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good. <laughs> My kids' names and two birds with the words, and I watched them fly. Oh, that's lovely. That's a really nice idea. Where are you having it tattooed? Like, on what part of the body are you having it tattooed? I'm going to guess it's the arm. Most painful tattoo was the ankle one right in the Achilles. Ooh. Yeah, I can imagine that one would smart a bit. Now, I just need to look across here because we have got some gaps in the tree. And I sort of need to line it up to make sure that we've got the right colours in the right places. On your forearm, yeah, that'll be fine. The, um, the pain isn't bad on the forearm at all. And if you've had kids, which clearly you have... You've been through the worst anyway, so <laughs> tattoo is going to be nothing, honestly. It's it's a kind of pain, I'm sure people have told you, but it's a kind of pain that you sort of, sometimes you'll go, oh, you know, you'll just grit your teeth a little bit, but you can carry on conversation. You know, it's not like you sat there howling. Uh, a little bit there. And maybe a little bit there. Just making sure that we're on the right level with this colour all the way across. My colour tattoo is worse than my black line. Yeah, I found that as well. It, but they say it's the opposite, don't they? They say the the uh, outlines are worse, but I suppose it just depends where where you have it. I think so. All the ones that I've had, it's been different every time. Right, so we've come down to about this point in the page, and obviously I can use the other page as a guideline, which is handy. But if any of you are colouring along, you might find that a bit difficult to gauge it. But just do your best to maybe even look at where this this roof is and you can see that we're just getting to the tip of this side of the roof with this colour. Hi River! They say that because of the amount of needles used for colour. Yeah, could be, could be. The red ink's um, not very good at healing on me for some reason. And I think that is quite a common thing with red ink. Like I had a rose on my shoulder and it took a lot, uh, like a long while to heal. My daughter is a Stephen King fan and has tattoos related to his books and films. Oh, that's really cool. I got paw prints, a cat bird on my arms and legs. So with a Stephen King, I really want to get a Shining tattoo because I love that film. And I'm, I'm thinking about having, because this is my Exorcist tattoo and my Hannibal Lecter one's just further up that, that arm. So I was thinking of making this into a bit of a horror sleeve, uh, just bits and bobs, you know. And I thought about having the room key you know, number 237, the bedroom key for the hotel, like down there, because I've seen a cool one of that, and it's kind of got the carpet, you know, the, the famous carpet pattern, it's got that in it as well. A lot of people are allergic to the red ink as well, yeah. Yes, River, we are, we've, we've converted over to Prismacolor because I'm just trying to match up the same colours that I've used on the other side of the page, so. Hi, Sandra. Can we see your tattoos? Oh my goodness. Um, I can show you the ones that I can like get on the camera because like my shoulders and stuff would be a bit difficult. But I've got Jay for my husband. I've got my kids' names and dates of birth. I've got the butterfly, obviously, that you always see. I've got the sister's tattoo with our years of birth. And my sister's got the other other girl. You know, it's like it's supposed to be this sat on a swing together. She's got the other girl on her arm. Then I've got this one for my Nana 
she's Italian and this just says, Nonna is one who holds your hand for a while and your heart forever. Then I've got the Exorcist one. Hannibal's up the arm, I don't know whether, let me zoom out a bit. I don't know whether you'll be able to see this. I'll just, I'm trying to get my sleeve up. But um, there's Hannibal. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that, just about. And then on this arm, I've got the one I told you about there. And a bit further up where Hannibal is on my other arm, I've got this one that says, be kind to yourself. And then the other two are on my shoulders. So one shoulder is a red rose for Italy and the other shoulder is a green shamrock for Ireland. So that's my uh, heritage. And I think that's it. I, don't, I haven't got any anywhere else. It's just arms. Yeah, it's just arms. Arms and hand. So there you go. I'll zoom you back in. So we're getting to this stage now where we need to change colours. And I think that this is grade lavender. So, let me try and find that in the hedgehog. Grade lavender, grade lavender, where are you? Oh, no, that's lilac, but I'm on the right track. Let's put that one back. Grade lavender. Oh, here it is, right on the end. There we go, grade lavender. Open it. Thank you. Yeah, I do like them, but I wish I'd have. Um, I wish I'd have planned out my arm better so that it could have been a proper horror sleeve. Because at the minute it's just like bits and bobs all over the place, you know. Right. So grade lavender. We're going to go up into the light cerulean blue. This is number ten twenty six in the prismas. So we're going to go up into the blue and do our best to create a gradient from this because as you can see on the other side it's not a perfect gradient but it's just a stopgap to get us from blue to pink so we'll just do that and we won't forget about here either what do you think of the new 150 chroma flow uh if i think you might have just come in but at the start of the video i was showing everyone that i've got the 100 set in because the 150 pencils aren't the the pre-orders have sold out so i can't can't get hold of the other 50 colors yet but i haven't actually looked because it's not it's only been a couple of days since i got that box and i've not actually had time to look yet at the uh extra colors but I do like Chromaflow pencils, so I'm sure they'll be great. How is the pencil holder going? Is it working okay? Um, it's a bit difficult for me to find a pencil quick because because I know where they all go in my pencil case and I know what leaf they're on of my pencil case. I can easily quickly find them. But with this, with them being in, even though they're in the same order, they're like stacked. So I've got to really look and find pencils. And then some of them are small and I've got to quite, kind of dig into the middle of the pencil holder to get hold of them so it's not fantastic but I enjoyed doing it anyway a good artist will be able to combine your tattoos and make them work yeah I know the thing is good artists are expensive and rightly so you know they deserve it because this is going to be on your body forever and they're so talented but at the same time it's like money <laughs> My son-in-law has a real heart tattoo, not just a red heart. It has all the veins and arteries. It looks amazing. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Like a real anatomic heart. I bet that looks really cool. I'd love ta more tattoos. Like I say, it's just they're expensive. Um, okay, so let's go back to this bit. Try and block some more colour out. This crease is super annoying, but there's literally nothing I can do about it, so... See, I love my Prismas because I can just go full heavy hand and they burnish really nicely. I know it's not most people's preferred way of colouring, but... We know how long it takes to build up artistic skill. Yeah, exactly. Your pencil holder is similar to the Artex box, the pencils. Yes, it is. That's very true. But I, I don't think, no, I didn't. I didn't keep my Artex in that box. I put them into 
a really big pencil case that I've got that holds my Prismas, my Luminance, my Derwent Lightfast and the Artex. It's like a 500 slot case or something. No, it must be more than that. It's a lot anyway. But I quite like doing that because it means I've, it, if I'm using my Prismas, I've also got quick access to other brands, you know, if, if I need different colours and stuff. And it means that I'm using my other brands more. So we've got to about here. I'm just going to go across and make sure that we're on the same level all the way. So I don't know what everyone's weather's been like recently, but yesterday we apparently had a tornado and that's, I was going to say that's unheard of, but apparently we have little tornadoes all the time. But this one was like, you could feel it. There was something different because it, it just came on so quickly. You know, it, it had been a little bit windy in the day, but then all of a sudden this rain started lashing down and then it was so, so windy. I, I don't think I've ever seen wind like that before and apparently the news said it was a tornado and there's been lots of damage done in my area apparently luckily we were okay but yeah it was crazy i think we need to vote on the next woodwork project for you to do in the show oh god <laughs> yeah but don't don't pick anything that involves maths just do something really simple like what can i do that's like dead simple and doesn't require any kind of brain work whatsoever. Hello, Kim. We had hailstones yesterday in Essex. Very cold today. Yeah, I think it's nippy today as well. I said that earlier. And we did have some hailstones earlier on and then it started raining again. But yeah, it's crazy. We get every weather you can think of. Sun, rain, hail and windy up. Laura says, we had hail and every weather in one day yesterday. Yeah, crazy. Did you get the really high winds as well, Laura? Yeah, and I mean, I heard that it was like um, a couple of months ago, because I've got an uncle that lives in San Diego, and apparently a couple of months ago, it was... What did they say happened? Flooding. It was flooding. It was like loads of rain or something. And that's like really unusual for San Diego. Um, okay, so have we got the same? No, we need a little bit more of this lavender colour. Before we move to actual lavender, the pencil. Which is now, unfortunately, one of the retired pencils in Prismacolor. Managed to sneak in between took it. Oh, bless you, Emma. Laura says, yeah, it was super bad. I have to have my window open a bit and it knocked everything off the window. So yeah, that was like mine because it woke me up in the night because my, bl my blinds on the window were just going wild. So I just kind of stumbled over to the window and shut it and then f dropped back into bed and fell asleep again. But yeah, it was really bad. I'm in Kent and it was gale force winds followed by a ton of rain and wind together, then bright summer sun. Exactly, why? <laughs> why? Just want it to be sunny and warm, not hot. Just exactly, Yvonne. That's that's me to a T. I just love seeing the sun. It doesn't have to be red hot. In fact, I don't want it red hot because I, I can't stand being too hot. But it's just seeing the sun, isn't it? Rather than gloom and doom all the time. Okay. Just going to add a little bit more of this lavender over here. It's grayed lavender. So 
still predicting snow for the UK? Well, I heard that there was some snow in Buxton the other day, which is in the Peak District. It's not too far from me. Um, but they, I think they get snow quite a lot because they're right up in the clouds, aren't they? Yeah, and it's got to be something you can use in your colouring room too. Everybody loved that video. You have to think of what you can make without too much maths. Yeah, what, what could I do? I need some ideas then. But I think everybody enjoyed just seeing me uh, trying to figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I'm no professional. And they're always, I think they're always good videos, aren't they, when uh, you don't really know what you're doing. So that's that. Um, then we want the actual lavender pencil, which is somewhere. Oh, here it is. So this is, no, it's not, that's orchid. See, I'm getting mixed up with the new colours. It's next to orchid. Lavender, there we go. Bonjour, Angelique. I love the foliage and flowers. Thank you. Just like seeing you. <laughs> You're absolutely wonderful the way you handled the saw, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen my husband do it a couple of times and I just, I, I did woodwork at school as well, so, you know, like, that you would normally do at school, nothing major. Right, so I've got the lavender now, which is PC934. And I don't know whether I've not come up enough with this, actually. I might just go over that again with the grade lavender. It's not going to erase it completely, but I think I've just not come down enough with this. You make a board to lean on just by the flat wood and sandpaper <laughs> yeah yeah that'll be easy she says i'll probably shave a finger off or something with the sandpaper all right so with the lavender we're just moving on to our next color simple pegboard do you know what Cheryl actually seeing as I've got into crochet I could do with a blocking board and I've seen them they've got um like nails sticking out and you just put it over the nails to stretch it I think that's what it's called I know Laura um was telling me you could you normally use like a foam mat to block out your crochet but I've seen ones with like pegs on them that wouldn't be too hard I don't think I have so much trouble with background using pencil, I can't seem to get it even. Have you any tips? Um, I think my biggest tip is just to make sure that you're leaving a, an area of l very light pressure before you go into the next colour because that light pressure is providing a base a base for you to start, start your next colour onto that's going to help him, them merge together. And it's not making much sense, but I'll show you what I mean. So, like, if we go back over here just ignore the crease again but you can see that I've got the, the grade lavender and this is a really difficult color to show you with actually because it's so pale but you would do like a very light area of grade lavender so it's almost ombre from full color full saturation going really really light and then you get your next color and you go over that area. This crease is so annoying. You go over that area. And that base layer that you put down with the previous colour just helps the two to merge. This is the worst area of the page. I can show you this as well. Okay, so. I'll show you on the big, big bit in the middle in a second. A pegboard. Draw, draw a drawer with compartments. Are you real, Laura? Do you think I can make a whole chest of drawers? <laughs> no way. And can you imagine the measurements that you'd have to do as well to get the drawers to be the right width to go in the holes? No, it's just, it's scaring me even thinking about it. Yeah, and crochet can be used for blocking granny squares. That's what I saw, Laura, yeah, granny squares. Um, 
but yeah, that might be cool to do to do a, a blocking board or whatever you call it. So that's not a great area to show you. So let's let's go on to here with this uh, this area of grade lavender. Granny square blocking boards, pegs get some proper square. Yeah. So this is like a big area of the grade lavender. And then I'm gonna come along with the side of the lavender pencil because this is quite a strong color compared to the grade lavender. You know, they're quite different. So I'm gonna come in with the side of it and just lay a bit of color over the bottom of the grade lavender just to give us a head start on blending these two together and as we move up further away from the blending point the transition point we can start to get heavier with the lavender you know so I can come really heavy like this Or you can do it in lots of light layers, it's up to you. I just prefer to just get it down, get the colour down and make it nice and bold in quick succession, you know. I don't like to mess about with lots of layering. It's just my preferred way of colouring. So like I say, as we're going up towards the transition, we're going to lessen the pressure on the lavender and we should get a decent blend between the two colours. Hi Nicole, if you could only use one set of pencils, which would you choose? Prismas, Prismas every day, because I love the colour range of the Prismas. I love the way that they lay down. They're absolutely unmatched. You know, the, there's no other pencil I can think of and that feels like a Prisma colour to lay down and blend. Um, luminance are really soft as well and blend wonderfully. But I think, I don't think anything's anything's ever made me think gosh that's that feels just like a prisma so you can see where I've lessened the pressure as I've come up into the grade lavender And then you can always go back over that area with the grade lavender to try and blend it even smoother. And hopefully you end up with a smooth gradient like that. I think I've been making backgrounds harder than what I need to. This one's beautiful, looks attainable. Yeah, it's just, it's about picking the right colours as well. So we're I'm trying to go through a whole different spectrum of the rainbow here from top to bottom. So we're going blue, purple, pink, cream, yellow. You know, it's like going through a lot of the colour wheel. So it's about picking the colours that's going to get you to the next colour. Do you know what I mean? That's that's kind of where it is. And doing that in as... I mean, you can do this in a lot of different pencils. I could have gone for even lighter blues going into the grade lavender, but I like to do it in as little pencils as possible, you know, just to just to get it done quicker, really. But, you know, the, the grade lavender kind of blends OK with the light cerulean blue and it kind of blends OK with the lavender. And it's just that stopgap colour between them. Hello, Rainbow. Derwent has Chromaflow 150 on the market. I'm curious, did you ever... Use Chromaflow. Yes, I, I have used Chromaflow quite a few uh, times for different pages and I really like them. But I've just not managed to get the 150 set yet. I've tried everything from crayons to eyeshadow. Yeah, I've heard people use eyeshadow, which is like, which is absolutely fine. It's, it's very creative, isn't it, to, to use all these different things for different purposes. And I guess it's just like pastels, isn't it, when you're using eyeshadow. And you'd probably use a fixative, wouldn't you? You know, to um, to fix the eyeshadow to the page. So I need to come down a bit more with this uh, lavender colour. And then I'll start to do some light pressure to move into the next colour, which looks like hot pink. 
but I think I'm still too high on this this lavender you see I think I've put this lavender a little bit above where it actually started on this page because this is this is the whole lavender area so we still need to do that much of lavender but I, it's because I'm talking at the same time I'm not concentrating enough <laughs> but it will look all right when it's finished because no one's going to scrutinize it so I'm going to come down with a bit more lavender hard pressure but yeah talking about the paints Laura I would love to have some kind of storage for them because they are quite big jars and there's 90 some colours and I, I want them all <laughs> but they're just too expensive but eventually I would like to just keep adding to it you know maybe I could buy one a week or something um do, do it like that you know because you know what it's like when you've got full set syndrome you, you want to have the lot Hairspray, yeah, that's fine. I'd, I'd, I've heard of that before. I don't know whether it yellows over time. Some Somebody, I'm sure, said that that happens with hairspray, but, you know, it's it's still a good fixative, isn't it? It does the job. Which Prismacolor would make multi... Oh, I wish Prismacolor would make multicoloured tip pencils with multiple colours on one pencil. That would be cool. Yeah, I've seen those kind of pencils before, a bit like this. So this one's got green, red, blue and yellow in it. I got this from a friend, um, but I don't know what brand it is. It doesn't say. But yeah, it's, it's the multiple coloured pencil anyway. That would be cool. Um, still need to come down here a bit more with this lavender. I'm just really trying to press this crease down. So I think we get to about here. You see how I'm starting to decrease the pressure as I come down. So this is really, really heavy. And then we're just decreasing the pressure on the pencil to leave just, just a hint of colour there. That's not the best transition, but I'm, I'm doing my best with the crease. Um, thanks for explaining. I have a practice to have, get a better effect using pan pastels. Um, yeah, the pan pastels are just amazing. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. But it's very different of a thing to do it with pencils. So hopefully this background will help you a bit. So I'm just looking, always looking to see that I'm not overstepping the mark with the colour. Have you ever visited the Derwent Pencil Museum in Cumbria? No, I haven't, but I would love to. I did actually get an offer from Derwent once to go to the pencil place, but it wasn't something I could do at the time. It's quite far from me, but I would love to do that. I'm sure it's dead interesting. I prefer a better quality of the Prisma than the Multicolor, to be honest. Better quality... Oh, you mean you prefer the Prismas than having a Multicolor pencil? But I think what the... Um, what Butterflies was saying was if Prismacolor made a multicolor pencil, so it would be their same formula, it would feel the same as a Prisma, but it would have loads of different colors in it. I don't know if it would go muddy though. I can imagine that might happen when you've got a few different colors in one pencil. I think sometimes it just creates mud on the page. Full set syndrome. We'll have to think of what you can use for storage for them. Then, then there is all your yarn. You need a she shed. <laughs> yeah, I could do with a blooming she shed. Honestly, that's so funny. It just reminded me of a she wee. Does anybody know what a she wee is? This will make you laugh. So it's like a little funnel. <laughs> what you can use when you camp in to make it easier for you to go for a tiddle. It's called a she wee. I did have a, a, a funny remark to say about that, but it might be a bit too rude for YouTube, so. Let's just say, at the time when I found out about this she we, I was wondering whether there was another she S word that people with IBS like myself could use. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was quite funny. I need a she shed. In a shiwi. I think I'm going to practice pressing harder. 
I was given one in hospital failure. Really? I didn't get given one of them. I know when I gave birth, I um, they gave you they give you a jug <laughs> to pour water at the same time because of the stitches and stuff. But let's not go into that because I'm sure somebody will come on the comments and tell me off for going into traumatic uh, detail. But yeah, so let's get down to about here. Claire's next maker, she shed and all the containers for a new crafts. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? I'm getting a set of Brute Funas I've never used them before, what do you think? I have got the Brute Funa Square and I did a video with them once, colouring skin and hair. I think it was a Mariola Budek bookmark that I coloured with them and I thought they were lovely. You know, they're not high-end pencils, you can't expect them to be, but for what they are, I thought they did really well on the uh, skin and hair. Hello, Claire's first time I've been able to come in. Oh, hi, Liz, welcome. A she shed is basically a shed for women, so that I can, you know, instead of a man cave, we've got a she shed. Square brutes are awesome. Oh, yes, we could submit designs and Claire choose. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I think you're all overestimating my woodworking skills here right I think maybe a little bit more but yeah you should be able to press your prismas down quite hard as long as they've not got a super sharp tip because that's just going to go snap straight away but if you get a nice slanted edge on your prisma you can press them hard no problem Oh, you've got a she shed, nice. Along with the designs could come templates. Yes, that has to be a rule, Jeanette. If you're going to create designs for me, you must do all the mathematics and give me the, all the templates and everything that I need. Because you could see on that video, my brain was just not braining that day. Or any day when it comes to maths, for that matter. Um, I think I need to come down a bit more even. Um, okay, I'm just going to zoom you out very slightly because I don't think you can see the whole page and I'm going to one end of it and you can't see what I'm doing. So I reckon that that's about the line to where we want to go with the lavender. My maths is total rubbish, I fold bits of paper, yeah, honestly. You know, like my mum watched the video and she was like, why didn't you just do it in quarters, split it into quarters and do, you know, however many it would be. And I was like, well, I just I just don't think like that. Are we going to talk about food this week? Yes. Come on then, what do you want to, uh, what should we talk about food? Let's get us all nice and hungry for after the live. I had a Sunday dinner today, even though it's Tuesday. But it's my favourite ever thing to eat is a Sunday dinner. Some chocolate for pudding. I watched Escape to the Country and looked at all these amazing houses that I could never afford. Roast potatoes, yes. I'm scared to use my prismas here in the south. It's warm already. Yeah, I've heard about that, actually. If you live in some of the really warm states and places in the world that the prismas can... They can, can melt, can't they? they the actual cores can melt. Right. Um, okay, so the next colour that I need... I think I said it was hot pink. Here we go, hot pink. 993. Or just made courgettes with garlic, jacket potatoes and honey roast ham with pineapple. That sounds nice. I'm actually stuffing my face with dark chocolate and why not? Right, hot pink is number 993. 
so I'm going again I'm going up over the end of the lavender so I'm going over the light pressure bit of the lavender because that's given us that base to go over into and there's all like little ridges and stuff because I mean it's been a long time since I did the facing page for this and it's got kind of bits of pigment and stuff all over the place so it's not going to be perfect but it'll, it'll do and then I might just do a little bit more lavender down here because I don't think I've come down quite enough. Someone's watching TV. No, it's my husband on TikTok. I tell him every single week, I'm like, please can you be quiet when I'm on this live? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And the next minute he's on TikTok. Everybody's moaning about you, Jack. I ain't done them. They heard you on TikTok. I'm been on TikTok. Well, whatever it was, you were just starting there, the video. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, I'm gonna come down a bit more with this lavender. My dad's making a sausage and mash lasagna tomorrow that he saw on TikTok, layering the mash gravy and sausage. That sounds amazing. Yeah, Laura, you'll have to send me some of that in the post. That sounds incredible. Everyone's saying it's okay. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> it's going to be quiet now, it says. Right. Is that enough lavender? I think so. Okay, hot pink. Hi, Katrina. So, again, going over the lavender with the hot pink. Lightly at first. And then you can start to layer up a bit and blend. You should hopefully get a nice gradient. And 73 loves to cook and he loves looking on TikTok. He's always trying new things. That's great. He sounds like a good cook as well. Snooker starts on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to seeing Ronnie O'Sullivan playing. I like to watch Ronnie O'Sullivan. I don't know if any of you watch snooker, but it's the world starts on Saturday, so that'll be fun. <clears throat> the background is so amazing with the blue shoe. Thank you. It's, it's kind of pushing it off the page, isn't it, a bit? So again, we're just going over the lavender until we've got a nice blend with the hot pink. Okay, see you later. He's almost the elder statesman of the game. Nicole's eating cookies while watching. I need to, I'm going to have some honey nut cornflakes after this. That's usually what I do. I get off the stream, I heave, heave a massive sigh of, oh, and then I don't want to talk to anyone because I've talked too much. So then I go and get my bowl of cornflakes. Because I can't really eat anything heavy late at night. Uncle Roger. I don't know who that is. You know what I have watched though on Netflix? I was telling Laura about this. Baby Reindeer. Watched it the other day. It's very strange, very unusual, but I, I enjoyed it. Like it was something different. And I think it was showing, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but just like to 
summarise. It's about this guy who got stalked by this woman. And it's a true story. And the bloke that plays the male character is the actual man who it happened to. So he wrote and created the series based on his own experiences. And it was... Um, it was like an interesting look into like the human condition and how people are really flawed. I mean, even him as the stalking victim, he still made mistakes and did things, you know, it, sometimes he encouraged it a bit and he didn't, you know, probably he didn't go to the police when he should have gone to the police and stuff like that. And you know what, like reasonings of why people don't do things, you know, like people will be shouting at the screen, why don't you just do that? Why don't you just leave that? You know what I mean? But... When we're in situations, we don't always do what's best for us, do we? Because that's just what being a human's about. So, yeah, that was really, really interesting. But it was it's might be triggering for some people because there's a lot of heavy themes in there. It does get, get quite dark. It's called Baby Reindeer. Love mac and cheese, but I'd like to try the American box stuff. Yeah, um, what do they call that? Is it Kraft, Kraft mac, mac and cheese or something like that? I wonder what that's like. My son Shane, he makes the most amazing macaroni cheese. He does it with bacon and it's like, oh, it's amazing. He's not done it for a while, actually. I might have to get him to do one. So I still need to come down a bit more with this hot pink. I wonder if you could get it, Laura, online somewhere, like um American food shop in the UK that might do it. So I'm lowering my pressure now so you can see it's there's not much pigment on there from the hot pink pencil. And hopefully we're coming down to the same. I need to put the page straight so that I can see because my line my line's going up there. I can see where I've done it with the lavender. Let's say about there then. Make sure that's nice and burnished. I don't like leaving white speckles if I can help it. Yeah, that's quite funny. The, the line has gone upwards. <laughs> I'll bring that down a bit as well. about there with the hot pink now I need to look at what the next colour is I think <gasps> bless you I think it might be a very light pink maybe the blush pink or the deco pink let me try the deco pink that's uh, 10 13 yeah that might be it so this is quite a step from the hot pink to the deco pink. So I'm sort of really trying to work that transition line and blend it. See, I'm using the Prismas at the moment as if they were wax crayons. 
you know, I'm just really using hard pressure to get the maximum colour and lay down out of the pencil. On the year eight curriculum, I taught for many years with extra bacon and onions instead of Mediterranean vegetables. Oh, that sounds lovely. I had beans on toast with cheese on top yesterday. <laughs> I love it though. Can't beat it. Hi, Nanamo. So let's bring this down a bit more. This so we're getting into the really light colours now. We're trying to transition into yellow. So just using this deco pink almost as a blending pencil to go over the line where it meets the hot pink and really make that blend nice and smooth. I can fill that bit in totally because it doesn't go any further. Let's see, this, this hasn't, there's a bit of a mark there, I don't know why. I might even come back with the lavender and try and straighten out my skew if line. It might be quite difficult to do though. Because I've sort of... I've messed it up up there as well, but hey ho. Will this method work on all sorts of paper? It should do, yeah, unless it's smooth, really smooth, glossy kind of paper because you've got no chance with pencils on that kind of paper. But yeah, most papers it does, yeah. Uh, as long as there's a bit of tooth to it, you should be fine. start looking into what my next colour might be. I think it might be peach. Deco peach maybe. Because we've got to get it to the point where it's it can go to yellow quite easily. And we're still on the pink spectrum at the minute. When I arrive in the mornings there are brownies in the air. afternoons it's the fragrance of peach. Oh my gosh Cheryl I'd never go home. I'd be like the cartoons you know when they see like the the smell go past the nose and the nostrils go like gigantic. That'd be like me. Can't beat cheesy beans on toast, exactly. Root canal, the worst. The worst, I'd rather give birth, yeah. To be fair, when I had my root canal when I was 12, I think she must have took it easy on me because it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. My maths teacher told me it was gonna be horrendous because his was. And then I had the pleasure of going back the next day and saying it didn't even hurt. So what are you talking about? I was a right little cow. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to try the Deco Peach now, if I can find it. Nectar can't be far away. I bet it's going to be one of the teeny tiny weeny ones. What's that one? Deco pink. What did I just use then? Oh, I used deco peach already. I meant to use deco pink. Lol. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so I should have been using deco pink PC 1014 to come from the uh, from the hot pink downwards. I don't know as if I can add any more onto that now because I've burnished it. So we have got a little bit of an unusual looking gradient here. That's probably why. So I'm just going to go over with a little bit more hot pink. I can still put a slight bit on the top. And hopefully that will help. Make the blend a little bit more seamless. How many roots if they'll all come out straight? Yeah. Just had to email my mental health doctor about my anxiety medication. Shall I me cut your dose? Oh, you've got to be careful cutting your doses on those things, you know. Obviously, listen to your doctor, but... Sometimes I think doctors can be flippant about decreasing medication and stuff like that. They think it's going to be totally fine, but then you end up with loads of side effects. I have three root canals. Oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> Kim saw it was the peach. I didn't see it was the peach. I'm too busy talking. That's what it is, but that's the fun of the lives, isn't it? So yeah, I've gone over it with a bit of hot pink anyway. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll just forget about that bit. So it's supposed to be hot pink into deco pink and then deco pink into deco peach. Just in case you're following along, don't make the same mistake I did. Toasted bread with a tin of baked beans. Oh right, somebody asked about what that is. Yeah, I bet in America you wouldn't have beans on toast. Or maybe you would, I don't know. Presser deserved it for trying to scare you about that. Yeah, he was, a, he was a, I was going to say a rude word then, but he wasn't very nice, put it that way. Yeah, Jeanette, exactly. You've got to be careful. So nice light layer of this hot pink, just to help with that mess up. And then deco pink, make sure I've got the right one this time. Do we know what the deco bit means in deco pink? It means it's just like a really light, almost like a pastel colour. And I think, I think they call it deco, but is it something to do with art deco? I don't actually know. But I just know that all the ones with deco in front are like a really light pastel colour, like quite a sort of very vintage pastel. That makes sense. Right, so I'm just doing a bit of the pink now. I don't need to do too much because the hot pink that I've put over the top of the deco peach has, has helped a bit when it comes to transition and transitioning over. So I'll just do a little bit of the pink. And then we can move into a bit of deco peach, which should look all right. And then we can start on to our yellows. Bringing the UK to SC. Oh, nice. Do you have tins of baked beans over there then? Want more medications to help treat anxiety? Yeah, it's difficult. Anxiety is one of them things that is very, very hard to treat, you know. Believe me, I know. My doctor said I could cut the dose in half because I use a lower dose, felt so horrible. Nicole, yeah, exactly. I've heard a lot of people say that, especially with the medication that I'm on. I take amitriptyline and the doctors, I've heard on the groups and stuff, the doctors are so flippant about decreasing and they just think, yeah, you'll be fine. But, you know, a lot of people actually use jeweler scales, the really fine scales, to shave off bits of the tablet and that's how slowly they come down. You know, because otherwise there's major side effects and doctors, they don't think that. They don't think about that. Um, right, so I've done the peach. Now we need to look into a bit of yellow. So I know that we've got... Well, I, I say I know. I don't know. I don't think that's canary yellow. I think that's probably lemon yellow, that one. So maybe if I bring the deco peach down a little bit more, we can put that yellow straight into it and it should blend, but I'm doing it very lightly. Hi, Renee. So I switched the liquid form medication, decrease one milligram per week. That worked way better. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good tip as well. But I think on some occasions, the liquid medications are more expensive, so they don't like to dispense them. I'm a trip clean, knocked me out for 12 hours. Yeah, they say that, yeah. I was very tired when I started on it for a while. Yeah, like I said, jeweler scales, because they measure in like two decimal points or something, they're really fine scales. And then like a, a file, a little file, and just shave off little bits of your tablet and come down it really, really, really slowly. So over months and months, you know, because you can have a lot of problems. Right, so I've got lemon yellow, PC915. Bark at me giving medical advice. Don't listen to me. Do what your doctor says. I'm just telling you what, you know, personally. Okay, so I don't think that that is lemon yellow, you know. 
it looks too bright unless this has faded but it looks a bit bright let me have a look at the canary now that's even brighter let's think then this looks like a deco yellow if what if such a thing existed am i even on screen still i'm so sorry can you see Yeah, it is. It's it's not something I can put my hand on, put my finger on rather, what colour I've used there. Unless I've gone over the yellow with the Deco Peach, which I might have done actually. So let's try that. I'm going to put some of this yellow down. And then I'm going to go over with Deco Peach and see if that mutes it down a little bit. Because it is more orangey of a colour than yellowy. I'm trying to get off medication for years, use smaller doses. I didn't know how that... Yeah, it hopefully that works for you that's a lot of people have to titrate down very 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 slowly so a bit of deco peach over this lemon yellow and i think it's starting to look like the other side it's still slightly bright and i'm absolutely fighting with this crease Yeah, like Jeanette says, ask your doctor, you know, I just wish that doctors could be <laughs> could be trusted on everything, you know, because they don't always know the best thing for, for a person's individual body, you know. Um, right, so I think that looks okay. It's a little bit scrappy, but it's okay. So I'll do the same on the other side. With shaving, you don't know how much you're taking. Yeah, if you can get the liquid one, that's definitely better because you can measure it in millimetres. But say if you were going down by just one gram, you could measure that you've shaved one gram off the tablet. Do you know what I mean? That's how you would do it. But again, I've got to say this. Don't don't take my advice. Just uh, consult your doctor, do research, do what you think's best. That's just how... I've heard that some people do it. Three days. What what happened, Jeanette? All right, going over again with the Deco Peach. So lemon yellow first and then Deco Peach over the whole lot. That should do it. Oh, that's interesting, Brittany. Heart failure has got worse. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sure you're on a plethora of tablets for that. Mine and ours the same. just want to bring that yellow up slightly more I reckon that's it let me just go over this again I can feel like I can see a line on camera that I can't see in real life can't do any more layering on that because I've burnished it and it's going a bit funny now so I'll have to leave that alone but I have done that I have gone wonky because of course I have you know you've seen you've all seen my pencil thingy so it's it's going to be wonky I'm a chips lean is one of them yeah you, you you've got to be careful you've got to be careful with these drugs um, okay, so let me zoom out a bit and then you'll be able to see. In fact, let me put these pencils back before I forget where they go. <laughs> so hot pink, that should go there, I think. No, it should go there. Deco pink, where's deco pink going? Uh, I think deco peach, where's deco pink there maybe? 
I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I think the Mediterranean blue goes there. I'll probably end up putting these all back in my pencil case, to be honest, because this is a bit of a faff. And that's where the grade lavender goes. No, it doesn't. It goes on the end. And then this one goes here. And I'll put the deco... No, I need to swap them over. Deco pink goes there. Deco peach goes there. Yeah. <laughs> And let's zoom out and have a look at the page so far. Am I on 1% zoom? I think so. Oh, thank you very much, Mo. Yeah, I enjoyed doing it. It was a bit, it was a bit difficult with the maths and everything, but I got there in the end. Yeah, it is cumbersome. And because the pencils are all different lengths, it's quite difficult to get the middle ones out. Oh, Brittany, when we say we're having our tea, it's funny because there's two ways of what tea can mean in the UK. It can mean a cup of tea that you drink or it can mean your evening meal. That's your tea. S some people in different places in the UK call it breakfast, lunch and dinner. Where I am in the Midlands, we call it breakfast, dinner and tea. And then maybe supper afterwards if you're still a bit peckish. Right, so let's have a look then. So we've managed to do pretty much the same gradient all the way across. Do we think it looks like it's matching? Um, let me know what you think. I think I might need to put a bit more yellow here because I've missed that bit out. So let me just grab that. I'll just layer a little bit of the yellow on top of the peach and the pink where we messed up. <laughs> and that's a bit better, I think. Oh, fab. So everybody likes it. That's great. Now I need to look at the colours of the grass so we can also match that. And I think it's going to be grass green, which is nice and handy. So grass green PC 909. And we'll just, oh, there it goes, snapping. We'll just carry on with the grass. Doing the shading under the shoe. And then across this side as well. Hang on, we've got some, oh there, that's part of the building, I think. That must be grass though. I think that might be a bit of grass underneath. Well, it is now anyway. Let's do a bit of grass green under the shoe for shading and then over this side so you can see all the dark shading areas is where you'll put your darkest colour and then the rest of it we can do with the lighter colour which I believe is spring green which is PC913. So spring green straight from the grass green and just block fill the rest of it in. So hopefully it's starting to look tied together now, like we've done this at the same time, not a few years apart. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, thank you, Liz. The skyline, it was really quite straight on this side and then it just went off on this side, but hey-ho. It's all right, it's not bad defibrillator oh my goodness that's really serious isn't it i shouldn't laugh but this is quite funny you know um in the next town to me we've got a funeral parlor because most towns have got them but on the front of the funeral parlor they've put a defibrillator on the wall like, you know how they've started to install defibrillators in different towns in the UK just in case anyone's out shopping and they need they need it. You know, they have a heart attack or whatever. It's really, really good that they've done that. But I did find it kind of darkly funny that they've put one on the outside of the funeral home. <clears throat> That's terrible, isn't it? If you, if you need a defibrillator, you know, all the time or very, very frequently... Hi Claire, sorry so late, just getting in from the doctor. I hope you're okay. Right. So that's the grass. Now we need to look at the ground. 
So I can't really identify what I used on this. It might be a bit of chocolate brown. So if I just, I'm, I'm back on the prismas now, but just while we're going across, you know, making everything look normal. Well, if it goes bad, you'll be in the right place. That's what I said, Nicole. I just didn't dare say it on video in case it was offensive. But oh my God, I was laughing. It was so funny. You've got to laugh though. Like you've got to laugh at, at things that are scary. Do you know what I mean? It's just life. If you, if you worry and cry about everything, you'll never get nowhere. So I've, ju I've got a dark sense of humour anyway. <clears throat> Right, so chocolate brown. Can't find it. That's dark brown. What's that one? Light umber. Where's chocolate brown? There it is. Chocolate brown PC 1082. Let's have a look. So it looks a little bit richer of a colour than on the other side. But then again, this could be fading because it has been a while since I've done it. So I'm just going to do an all over layer of the chocolate brown. <laughs> it is funny. It is funny. Just the placement of it, you know. I just thought, when they put that up, did they did it occur to anybody <laughs> where they've placed that? Because I think <laughs> if you're in, no, I can't. I don't want to. I, I just know that I'm going to get someone watching this back and be really angry that I've um, been laughing about funeral parlors. Right, so there's a layer of chocolate. Now I'm going to get a bit of a darker brown, I think. Let's have a look. What have I got? Got a bit of sepia. Let me just sharpen it. I'm going to do some sepia bits. If you look at the other side, I've sort of done it all over the shop. I've not really followed any kind of pattern with it. I've just done bits of dark areas here, there and everywhere. So that's what I'm going to do on this side just to make it match. Pretty serious, 45 at the time, now 63. Oh, bless him. Oh, that's horrible, Nicole. That is horrible. That must have been so scary to experience. Some people need to get sense of humour and not get bent out of shape. Yeah, I've had it though, like, even since I started these lives, I've had a few people. I think the first three lives that I did, I got some kind of comment off somebody about something that I'd said, you know. So I feel like I'm sort of walking on eggshells, but I'm a respiratory therapist, can't offend me. <laughs> okay, I forgot a bit of spring green under there. And did I see one somewhere else? Yeah, just here. just bits of sepia randomly on the ground I have to I know what you mean get messages yet yeah, it's, it's terrible isn't it like I would never dream of that I'd just turn the video off you know if somebody said something and I didn't like it or, or whatever I'll just turn the video off but I suppose we've got free speech for a reason. Yeah, yeah, uh, Mo, it's it's crazy, really. But and I'm somebody that just doesn't want to offend anyone. You know, I really I take it to heart if anyone says that they were upset by something I've said or offended. I really take it to heart. So, but I just I do want to be myself as well you know I don't want to have to be walking on eggshells on my own channel but at the same time I, I need to be aware of what some people have find funny what they wouldn't you know <laughs> my dad and I now make jokes about it face and the hair have the same colour <laughs> you've got my sense of humour Nicole you definitely have 
it's trench humour though, isn't it? You know, it's the worst things that can happen in life, but you've got to, at least I find it helps get through these, those things to, to make them into jokes, you know. Um, right, so I've done bits of sepia. I'm just going to go back in with some chocolate. I feel like it might be just slightly too warm of a brown to match the other side. But I'll just do a bit anyway, so we've got some variation on the ground. Can you imagine me doing this as a tutorial? I'd just be like, yeah, just splash the colours any way you want. <laughs> There's nothing skillful in this. Gotten to a point of afraid to talk anymore than what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. I would take it to heart too, but watching you realise you can't please anyone. Yeah, that's it. I would never, ever, ever dream of being cruel. It's just I've got I've got a wicked sense of humour. Yeah, I think it is British, actually, to be like that. <clears throat> if you're only laughing at the unlikely opportunity of the use, yeah. <laughs> that's it. It's just it just tickled me, I suppose, that somebody thought it was a good place to put a defib. Right, so I've put a bit of chocolate on there and then I need to like tone it down a little bit. I'm thinking maybe some light umber. Let me sharpen it. The light umber is not quite as warm as the chocolate. It's not got much of a reddish undertone. It has a little bit, but it's not too bad so I'm just going to do an all over burnish of this and then hopefully we should have something that looks quite similar across the whole bottom of the page it might even be an, an idea to get a light French grey out and do the top of the layer because this looks very kind of washed out and grey compared to this so I'll just put a bit of this light umber and then I think let's say 20% warm grey, uh, French grey, sorry, 1069. And go over that and that should create the milky look that this side has got. So I'm really pressing really hard now. It still looks a different shade, but I think maybe it's just because of how long ago it's been since I coloured this. I don't know. It might have a bit of what you call it on it. What do they call that uh, thing? I can't remember now. Bloom, wax bloom. Yep, French grey. It could be, it might be an idea to put some white over the top. When the tension gets too high, the body needs lucky hormones. And can you hear my phone buzzing, buzzing? Um, that's why people unintentionally make a joke at a funeral. Yeah, exactly. That's just, that's it. You've got to, you get through it with trench humour. Yeah, sorry guys, it is mine. It's because I've got it propped up, so every time it vibrates, it's really loud. Right, so I've done it all over layer of French grey. Smush, mush, mush, as um, somebody wrote that earlier and I forgot to say. Oh, it was Renee. Smush it, smush it good. Smush, mush, mush. <sighs> uh... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look, it doesn't match that well, but I don't think anybody would immediately have their eye drawn to it. Do you know what I mean? So I'll put these pencils back. If I can remember where to put them. I think chocolate goes there. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. You carry on. <laughs> and then light umber goes there. 
and sepia goes there. Okie doke. So what next? Let me think. We've done like the big parts of the illustration, haven't we? Thank you very much. Hi, Melinda. Have I said hi to Melinda? I can't remember. Hi again. So we've managed to do the background. We've done the ground and the grass. Um, what now? Should we do some lanterns? Let's do some of these lanterns. So I've got the reds. I'm going back to Holbein now, by the way. I've got the reds. I think it would be quite nice to have the bottom of these lanterns be red and the top be yellow. What do you reckon? <laughs> it looks like it needs a little chocolate brown. That's what I, I used on it. I did use chocolate brown, but it was quite reddish and warm. I don't know. Maybe if I layered a, a different grey over it, like a bit of a darker warm grey or something, I, I don't know. The socks in the tree. Where's the socks in the tree? Socks in the tree. I'm missing something here. Where's the sock in a tree? I can't see it. Right, let's go with the red, the crimson from the Holbein 062. And I'll just do the kind of outline of the bottom of these with the darker red. Shall I zoom you in a bit more? Yeah, I did try the um, light umber as well. I thought that would do it, but it, it's not quite right. So obviously I'm not going to get this page finished tonight. Mm. So ugh, next week we'll be finishing off the page and then we'll have time to start something else. What do you want to see me do next? because I would really like to have a go at the uh, galaxy white lines that's going around Instagram at the minute. Suzanne Berry did it, looks amazing. I think it started off with, it didn't start off with Fane, I think that's how you say her name on Instagram, F-A-Y-N-N. -N. She saw it from someone else and that was the original, but then Fane kind of made it blow up, I think, this galaxy white lines. And... I would like to try that. So we put watercolours on the background of a page and then we would do shading with white pencil. You know, just, just pure white pencil over the top of the watercolours and then we'd outline everything in white pen. I don't know if any of you have seen that, but I would really like to have a go at that. So if you'd like to see me do that, we could definitely do that on a live. Hi, Galene. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, when some, someone said you made a sock of the lantern in the tree. Oh, hang on, I remember something about that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yes, I've tried it, so relaxing. Laura says, yes, haven't, but curious and would love to see you do it. Right, so that's what we'll do next then. Should I do it in a Hannah Carlson book? Because a lot of people have been doing it in Hannah Carlson books and it seems to work really well. I don't know if I want to go... I could do a Johanna Basford book, but we've already done a small victories illustration on these lives. And I feel like I want to do some different books. What kind of books should I use? Or, you know, what, what illustration? Coming in now with the Scarlet 044. So I was going to say I could finish off the details on this page using just the whole bind colours that we've already used before next week if, if you wanted me to start fresh with a new project next week but I know that there are a couple of people who are colouring along with this and they might not want me to do anything off camera so we'll see uh, any you want something simple of Hannah Carlson Hannah definitely love to see that Hannah Carlson right okay that's it then Hannah Carlson just need to pick a book and pick a page now I'll have a good think about that 
over the next week unless anybody can recommend any. Now I've got the orange, this is Tangerine 140 and I'm just going to use that to finish off the little blend in these lanterns. Happy little blend, something Bob Ross would say. Happy little blend. <clears throat> Yeah, everyone's saying Hannah Carlson, so that's great. She's got a new book coming out. Have you seen the teaser? It looks like it's going to be a Christmas-themed book because the pages that she sort of quickly showed on the thing, it looked like it was Christmas-themed. It's really, really exciting. Oh, snap. The kids' colouring book from Hannah. That would actually be a good idea because there's a lot of space um, the one I've got is the party one, I think. That might be a good idea, Nicole. A nice spring page from Hannah. That's another good idea. I don't use Instagram enough. Which thing is this? So basically, you've got your illustration. You do a big wash of watercolour paint on the back. So you could do galaxy. A lot of people have been doing galaxy. So adding in blue and pink, you know, to make a galaxy background out of watercolour. And then instead of colouring the actual image, you would just use simply a white pencil to kind of shade inside all of the white lines. And then the actual lines themselves, you'd cover up with white gel pen or Posca pen or whatever. And it looks really, really nice. Yeah, it was a big snap. <laughs> okay, so. Right. Did I do the... I think I did. Now we want some yellow. Now the yellow that I've got out in the whole binds is the cream. So I'm going to have a go at that and see if that looks okay. So we've got the cream. And I'm just going to block colour that and also the little bits underneath as well. Snap again. <sighs> Isn't it funny that Prisma colours didn't snap and they're the most susceptible? pencils to snap big cat in magical dawn that look cool as a galaxy cat that's a good idea not too detailed a page yeah that's why i think nicole's is it nicole who said that or emma somebody said about doing it in hannah's kids coloring book and i think that is a really good idea because we've got very simple illustrations but yeah we should we should definitely try that Now then, if I get my white Prismacolor, white, where are you white? There you are. White Prismacolor, give it a sharpen. I wonder if I can make a little bit of a, a haze around these lanterns. I know that we've burnished the background a lot but this Prismacolor White is quite opaque, so I'm just thinking I could give them a little bit of a halo. It's not going to look like a, you know, a proper glow, but it might just elevate them a little bit. Oh, I'm snapping all of it, shop now. Five thousand pictures. <laughs> the paper in Johanna's books are not white. I want to try that technique in one of her older books. Yeah, good thinking. So we've got something that could be akin to a glow, <laughs> even though it's not very bright. Hopefully you can see on camera the difference that that's made. It's very subtle. 
Um, I might go over the black lines just to, because I think the white's kind of made the black lines look a bit milky. Love the Derwent Chinese white more than Prisma white. Chinese white. Do you, is it the one from the drawing set? Derwent drawing? This one. Let's have a look. I love these pencils. I wish they did more colours. Chinese white. Let's have a look then. Mind you, it might not work as well because I've burnished the hell out of the page, but... Hmm. I'll have to give that a go next time. Okay, so let's just add in some black lines then. What's this one? No, that's a brush tip. Um, I've got Faber-Castell Pit. Okay, so... I'm like holding my breath while I do this. <laughs> Just finished a butterfly on a slice of cake in the party book. Finally a page that was doable for my patients. I bet that looks amazing. You'll have to tag me in it. Need a Hannah book, don't know which one to get first. Why don't you get gold corn? Or is it called grains of gold? Because that one's like a compilation book of images from some of her previous books. Gold corn, grains of gold. I don't know if these black lines are helping or not, but I'm committed now. That one went right off. Oh well. Okay, lantern's done. Uh, doesn't she have a new one out soon? Yeah, that's what I was just saying about the Christmas. I think it's going to be a Christmas book. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Christmas book. Oh, do you know what I've missed on this shoe? I've not done this little tag on the back of the sole and I did it blue on this page. So I'm gonna do it red on this page. So again, I'll just get my crimson Holbein and do the same kind of blend that I've done on the other side of the page. Can you see this? Am I off camera again? <laughs> right, crimson and then Thank you so much, um, Pierre. Hannah Carlson sometimes has a bit of weird drawing, so that's a matter of taste. No worries, Amy. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thank you for uh, joining. Okay, so we'll put a bit of this on. This is the Scarlet. And then a little bit of Tangerine. That's the little tag done. So we've got like a, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> They're like different on, you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? I need the green Posca back because we've got to go over the little leaves. Let me zoom out a bit. So we've got all these little tiny leaves. I'm just gonna go over them. And we also need to do a couple of little red leaves as well, just in case some of these flowers in the tree have lost their petals as well. Where did you see the preview of Hannah's book? She put it on Instagram and Facebook, I think. And 
over here as well. Some on the top of the shoe that I could have missed. In fact, there's quite a few. Got my copy of Rising on Monday. Oh, lovely. You'll have to um, put it on Instagram when you've coloured something so I can have a look. Wish my page looked so smooth with a heavier hand. It always looks blotchy. Yeah, you, I think you've got to know when to stop because mine was starting to go blotchy in certain areas. So, yeah, it's it can be a bit of a thing where you've got to know when to stop. And I sometimes don't. <laughs> So I often have that trouble as well. So it looks like on the other side of this double page spread, I also put some dark green Posca in the leaves as well. So I will do that and just find some dark green. You've ordered grains of gold. Oh, fantastic. Um, right, dark green. I'll do some of these in a darker green. Let's go over that. on this side. Oh, I've just smushed that one. That's the only thing, I always do it. Every single time I use a paint pen, you can guarantee I'm gonna smush it. And just sent these oils and I hand on Monday, you know, I paints oils. Used to try and use Prisma and smush them, but it always like a three-year-old. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, now, where did I see that I'd missed? Oh, some down here in the lighter mm. green. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, and then I want the red. Do a couple of red leaves falling down try not to smush anything let's do a little one there and one on the ground here Can I do some red ones? I might just draw some red ones in because I've filled in all the gaps now. Today I got my new sleeping mask with earbuds in the mask. The earbuds are flat and I can lay on my ears. Oh my gosh, that's a really good idea. Because you could use them to listen to podcasts or anything, couldn't you? If you wanted to fall asleep to music or a podcast or an audio book. That is a really good idea. What do you reckon I should do then, guys, about finishing off this page? Because we have only got the little, little detail. I know that's not really little, but if I just stick to all the Holbein colours that I've used so far, do you think I could probably do that in between now and next week so that we can start fresh with the Galaxy white lines? What do you reckon? But I, I will only use the whole bind colours that we chose at the start of the page. So if anybody is colouring along, I won't use any different colours. So, you know, what, whatever I do this with, it will be with colours we've already picked. But let me know what you reckon. Because I think it would be quite good if I... Like like with the one last time where I just do the, the details off camera. But I'm more than happy to do it at 
the start of next week's live I would say it's probably about half an hour's work but with me talking and stuff it might be an hour before we've finished so let's have some votes please guys right now but of course with the ipod up very comfy oh so you're listening to me right down your ears <laughs> okay so we've got vote fresh yes if you can yes for fresh start jeanette wants me to finish off off camera so that's good happy to go straight to the new page yes i agree could you do a quick little video out in the week once you've colored it all with the colors you use yeah what i was going to do emma is when i come back next tuesday for the live i will start by showing you what i've done and I'll explain, you know, what colours I've used and things. So I'll do that next Tuesday at the beginning of the live. But I think because, you know, we've only got a couple of hours a week, it might be an idea that I just do finish off these little bits in between so we can start a new project. Finish you off camera. Wanting to see Galaxy. I think you should show the finished picture at the beginning of next week. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So everyone's saying let's start fresh. So if there is anybody watching this back later and you are colouring along and you're feeling a bit daunted by the fact that I'm going to finish it off on camera, um, I will explain what I've used and where I've used them next week. But you're always more than welcome to message me on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere and just ask ask away, you know, any questions that you've got about how I've completed the page and I'm more than happy to answer them. Okay, good idea for those that are following, yep. Yeah, so we're almost at the end of the live, so that two hours has gone really quick. Um, it's looking all right, isn't it? It's looking okay. I've just noticed that I did the outlines of this shoe in black, but I've done the outlines in grey on this one. Do you think I should put black on there? Or shall I leave it in grey? What do you reckon? But yeah, apart from that, I hope you've had a good time on tonight's live and I haven't offended anybody. <laughs> um, I've really enjoyed it and I think I did quite well to match up the colours from a couple of years ago when I did this page. Um, so I think it does look like it could have been done at the same time, you know? It ties in mm. together nicely. Okay, we've got a couple of people saying no to black, a couple of people saying yes to black. So let's see next week what I've decided to do. I'll think about it as I'm finishing it. And uh, and yeah, so it looks pretty good as a double page spread, do you reckon? I um, hope you've enjoyed watching it. And I will also pick a Hannah Colson image to do next week to start our galaxy lines. It's going to be a bit different for me because I'm not proficient in watercolour or painting really so again it's going to be play it by ear make lots of mistakes together <laughs> and yeah so uh, I hope everyone has a good week to come and you've got lots of stories to tell me next week I do love to hear what you've all been up to and thank you for the company tonight and for mm. sticking with me for a couple of hours Really, really appreciate you watching and I I guess that's goodbye and I will see you next Tuesday for the live. Always 7 o'clock GMT, I think everybody knows. But yeah, have a great week and uh, take care. I'll see you next time.